Hello and welcome to a new coding adventure. Today I'm going to be simulating a simple ecosystem, an idea which was inspired by this really cool video from the channel Primer. I started by generating a little map with water tiles so that creatures would have something to drink, and land tiles for them to move around on. I also added some trees as decorations and obstacles, and then some little plants as a food source. Next, I needed a creature, so I made a crude little bunny out of some cubes and placed him into the world. He seemed happy enough just hopping around, but of course I wasn't going to let him have such an easy life. I gave him hunger and thirst, so he'll need to find some water soon or else die. Fortunately for him, there's some nearby, so he's hopping over to that and having a drink. There's also a plant over there, so he's going to head over to that and gobble it up. Now he's thirsty again, so back to the water. This, by the way, is his sensory radius, outside of which he's blind, so currently he's just hopping around randomly trying to find some food, but now that he's spotted that plant up there, he's going to head directly over to it. The next thing I added was an urge to reproduce. Currently that urge is stronger than the bunny's hunger or thirst, so he'll go searching for a mate. He's not likely to have much luck though, on account of being the only rabbit in existence. So I'll add in a female bunny, and let's see if they get together. They're both searching, and it looks like they've spotted one another. You may want to avert your eyes for this. Alright, it's safe to look again. The bunny is now pregnant, so in just a few moments we should be able to welcome some new little creatures to the world. These little fellas will take some time to grow up, during which their speed and sense of sight will develop, so right now they're of course particularly vulnerable. In the simulation, female bunnies actually have a gene which controls how long they're pregnant for. If that duration is short, they can obviously have offspring more frequently, but the offspring will be more underdeveloped and have less of a chance of surviving to adulthood. There are a few more genes, one for sensory distance and one for reproductive urge, which I've described already. Then there's one for speed, allowing the rabbit to move faster, at the cost of getting hungry and thirsty more quickly. Finally, for males only, there's desirability, which here is expressed by having redder fur. So looking at the code for a second, when a male rabbit spots a female who's also looking for a mate, he'll send a signal to her, and the more desirable he is, the higher the chance that she'll accept his advances. If she rejects him, he'll add her to his mental list of unimpressed females, and won't approach her again until he's forgotten about it a little while later. Now, when two rabbits mate, the offspring will inherit these genes from their parents. In the code, you can see that each gene will be randomly selected to come from either the mother or the father. On top of that, there's a small chance for each gene to mutate, which will increase or decrease its value by a little bit. Alright, I'm going to start the simulation out with 300 rabbits, and let's see what happens. So, the population first shoots up with the first wave of babies, but the majority of them aren't very good at surviving, so their numbers quickly decline. At this stage, with just around 100 rabbits in existence, they're at a high risk of extinction. Several times when I ran the simulation, they got unlucky at this point, and just died out. But this time they seem to be hanging on tenaciously, and with each new generation becoming more adept at surviving. After about 20 minutes of simulation, the population was over 1400. About 2600 rabbits died from hunger along the way, and over 4000 from thirst. Let's have a look at what happened to the genes over this time. The average gestation duration rose quite steadily, indicating that in this environment it was better to have fewer, but stronger offspring. The sensory distance rose rapidly, as those too short-sighted to reliably find food and water were weeded out. The reproductive urge initially dropped, but I guess as the senses of the rabbits improved, it became less risky to spend more time searching for a mate. Next there's speed, but apparently moving faster wasn't really worth the cost. And finally, desirability, which fluctuated a bit for some reason, before finally heading upwards. I then thought it would be interesting to introduce a predator, so I made something that hopefully looks at least a little bit like a fox, and told it to move towards rabbits and eat them. These rabbits are basically just sitting ducks though, so I made the fox have to work a little harder for his meal by making them flee from him. <laughs> so 
So, going back to where we were in the simulation, I added in an initial population of 10 foxes and let it continue running. At first things seemed to be going okay, but the number of foxes grew rapidly since they were at the top of the food chain, and they hunted the rabbits to extinction. Then they realized they'd made a terrible mistake and starved to death. With the introduction of the foxes, speed of course became much more valuable to a rabbit's survival. The other traits though remained roughly the same. I tried running the simulation again, this time with the foxes being there from the outset. As the foxes became more numerous, the rabbits were nearly hunted to extinction, but they managed to make a huge comeback. Unfortunately, this led to an explosion in the fox population as well. The rabbits went extinct, and the foxes followed shortly thereafter. What I found interesting about this run is that in the presence of the foxes, the rabbits evolved to have an extremely high reproductive urge. I guess if they didn't find a mate quickly, they might be killed by a fox and not have the chance to pass their genes on. The gestation duration stayed low this time, favoring quantity of offspring over quality. Here's how the other traits turned out, in case you're interested. I'm rather sad that I couldn't get the rabbits and foxes to coexist for very long. The only time the foxes didn't hunt the rabbits to extinction was once when they weren't able to find the last remaining group of bunnies and starved to death. Those bunnies then lived happily ever after though, so I guess it's a happy ending. In any case, I hope you've enjoyed this coding adventure. Make sure to have a look at the others in the series if you did, and until next time, cheers!